Hey everyone, this is Kevin Kitchens with the Ones Upon a Game, and today I'm going to do a quick um, uh, gameplay brief of Sergeant's D-Day. This is the board game version of the Sergeant's miniature game, and uh, I'm going to just take you through. I have played through three turns, and we'll be playing um, uh, the fourth turn out, uh, and hopefully uh, give you some insight into how the game actually plays. So, uh, kind of explain the situation as it stands right now. Um, like I said, we're in the, uh, I just finished the third turn. It was a brutal turn as we had two, uh, two fights, which is a, it's the term for close combat. Um, <clears throat> these two American soldiers had moved down and dispatched, uh, one of the German soldiers, uh, but they left a, uh, unit alone there. And these two Germans said, hey, that close combat sounds like a good idea. And they ran in there and um, uh, took him out. So uh, uh, it got brutal, but he took one of them down. So uh, that worked out pretty good. So where we stand right now is uh, each, each side is down two soldiers. The Germans did start out with six. Uh, you start with two characters in this first mission. Um, so those are, those are set uh, characters that are going to be in the mission, and then you have the um, um, 12 victory points to spend to build up your forces. Um, uh, let's see, the, the Germans' objective is to kill at least half the soldiers, the, uh, the Americans, and the Americans' mission is to secure uh, control um, over half of the landmark tiles, which are you remember in the unboxing video where I messed those up, so they're the larger uh, section tiles um, that are actually made up of smaller ones. Anyway, uh, there's two of them in the game, so to control over half, they have to control both, because controlling one is only half, not over half. So uh, those are the two objectives that they drew. Um, that is one issue playing the game solo, is that the objectives are normally kept secret. Um, and in this case, I know what the objectives are. However, uh, that can be, you know, story-wise, can very easily be dismissed as intel. Um, the, uh, the Germans know that the Americans are trying to take these key positions, and, of course, the enemy is just trying to, just trying to kill you. So that works out fine in this case. Uh, incidentally, when I played the um, miniatures game, uh, those are the same two objectives that I got. Uh, for each side in the miniatures game. It gives you um, three to choose from in the first mission, and uh, not choose from, but randomly pick from. And I did it with a die roll, and just ironically got the same thing. Not ironically, coincidentally, uh, got the, uh, the same objectives. So at least I knew kind of what I was doing. The map is pretty much set up the exact same way as the other, except being smaller, because these are smaller tiles. Uh, it fits in a lot more compact space, so it works out great. Um, uh, so entry areas, um, there are two red areas, A, B, and C, and the, the blue areas, purple areas, are X, Y, and Z. Um, I just, for the sake of how I set it up, um, you can pick any one unless the mission says otherwise, uh, and then all your forces enter from the same one. Um, so I, since I already had the uh, allies set up this way and the German set up the other way. I just gave them X, Y, and Z, and the allies A, B, and C uh, did another die roll, and the Americans came in on A, and the uh, coincidentally, the Germans, who are tracking them, came in on Z, so they came in pretty quick. Uh, one thing about the Germans' objective is which, you know, again, this was, this was knowledge that I had, but I would have known that they were a little further out, maybe, is they don't actually get to enter until turn two. So no matter what they play, their cards are basically useless for the first turn because there's really nothing they can do off-board, um, at least in the version I've got now. It may have been something with off-board artillery or something that, in an expansion, but in this case, there was nothing they could do. They couldn't move, they couldn't spot, they can't do anything because they're not in the, in the field yet. So... Uh, I guess I have nothing left to do, nothing left to talk about, except go ahead and get the turn set up and uh, show you how that goes. So, I've already discarded everything, so I've, I have totally ended the turn. Um, I have 
the, the, I have. The U.S. has three soldiers left, Harrison Fields and Otter. Uh, Harrison and Fields are, I believe, two of the, the two uh, characters. Um, so they're the same in this box, whereas Otter is a unique guy that I got and other people will get, but it's just random assortment. The, uh, the Germans have uh, Dreyer, Fisher, Schmidt, and Dorr left. Uh, we took out Bader in the close combat. Uh, in the close combat, you play successful cards and apply the wounds. And um, uh, the Germans only had wound cards, so they wounded Peters. Peters was only able to draw one card, and when he flipped it over, that card was a kill. And he got to pick who he wanted to kill, and so they killed uh, Bader. And the reason he targeted him was Bader was an officer, or a leader, I should say. And leaders in the game are those who have a draw cards option. Okay, so he had a draw cards option, so we took him out. So that means the Germans will get less cards to draw when their turn starts. Uh, so now we're actually equal. The Germans did have an advantage. They had they had two leaders who could draw cards, and the U.S. only had one, so they actually got more cards each turn. So let me set it up. So the first thing we do is we're going to discard while we move the turn marker to turn four. We'll discard the story cards from the last uh, turn. Oh, doing all this one-handed is just so much fun. Especially when they're slick. There we go. All right, those are discarded. And now you, the, the story deck is built custom for each mission. It tells you which cards to remove because there may be some that reference certain characters or certain tiles or things like that, and so you take those out. So you'll draw and you'll go one, two, three in order. And we'll just see what we get because I've not stacked the deck. All right. Oh, and we got an event. Okay. So what you do is you the first thing you do is you lay uh, you lay the cards out in order, and the order is important because number one you've got these options here that tell you what actions you can play. And I'll get to that in a minute. But then you've also got these cause and effect. Uh, actions uh, or event uh, triggers that happen and the only time they trigger is if this side matches with this side so it completes the panel um, you know, the narration panel or whatever you call it so landmark did not match with people so that's not a fit but terrain matches with terrain and you immediately execute uh, in order any if, in case you got two matches you go ahead and execute um, the events before the turn even happens so we're going to find out what happens. And what it says here is, the roads are all bad. All movement on road squares suffer restricted movement effects. All right. Well, that one I'm going to have to look up because that's new. But as you see here, we have road tiles. So any movement on those is restricted. So I assume that's a move R. Um, so you have this... Uh, it was move S that can happen. Um, it's, I guess, slow movement and R is restricted. So anybody that's on a road tile, uh, one cool thing about this game is you pay the terrain cost when you leave the square, not entering the square. So you get bogged down, not impeded. So... Um, all those tiles that normally would be clear because all the road tiles don't don't have any imped impediments in them, any restrictions, they're all going to slow them down. So this is all one tile. Since it's a landmark, it's considered one tile and it counts as two squares. But anyway, so these guys, will, when they move, they'll be impeded. They'll be, in, they'll be fine. They're already in a slow tile. Uh, he'll be impeded. So moving out is going to be impeded because the road slowed them down. So that will be... That will be interesting, and hopefully I'll remember that. All right, so so that's done. That just gives me a terrain event. Um, so, looking at the cards, and this is this is a cool thing about the game. It's kind of like a, a chip pull, but it's a chip pull of what actions you can play, not a chip pull of what um, uh, you know units units can come and play. So, um, how this works is. For the first phase, there's three phases in the turn. Each each side will act 
once per phase. Uh, we'll get a we'll get a let's call this a round, I guess. All those called turns, anyway. Uh, each phase, uh, the each side will get to play a card. Okay, so they can play, and they must play for the first phase a move or a hide, a shoot or a move, a look or a shoot. Okay, and so each team panel has three phase slots, and they will put their cards down. Now again, this is something. Here's a German sign over here. Uh, so again, this is something that's you know you you lose a little bit of the the fog of war with um, uh, playing solo because I'm going to know what each side does. So, uh, you know, it can be a little, um, um, you just have to be, you know, again, play to the best of your ability. But the story that evolves out of it is really fun. So we'll see what happens there. Um, okay, so we got to draw cards. So how do you draw cards? Well, the base for the uh, most scenarios, I haven't seen one that's not, I'm sure there are, but the base draw is three cards um, from your deck. And this is your action deck. The action deck is made up of seven cards per soldier. So in this case, the, the Allies started out with five soldiers, so they had seven cards. Uh, and I kind of explained that in the unboxing video. But they start out with seven cards and um, per soldier. And then you shuffle those together. So they had 35 car, a 35-card 35 deck, shuffle those together. Germans had six soldiers, so they had a 42-card deck. Shuffle them together, and that's what you're going to draw from. And they'll, they'll recycle. But these are used for your actions, these are used for your hit checks, these are used for your damage checks, uh, these can be used for, in the case of some explosions, uh, uh, identity checks to find out who got hit, kind of thing, using the dog tag. Dog tag is the ownership of the card as well, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, so, do I have enough? So, so, three cards is your base, and any leaders add to that. All right, so I've got one leader to draw two cards. So I get to draw five cards for the allies, and again, the same with the Germans, because they have a plus two now. They did have plus four, so they were getting seven cards. It just means they have more to choose from. Uh, better command means they have better, more options. Okay, so uh, because the Americans had started out with fewer cards uh, in their deck, 35 versus 42, I actually ended up having to shuffle. I could only draw four, and then that's why I had to shuffle their deck up. Uh, so it was a two-handed thing, so I couldn't hope to do that. So, I have drawn their cards. So, uh, there is a subtle difference. I don't know if you can see it in this or not, but that's the allies are green and the Germans are gray. And so, you do keep them distinctly different. Um, all right, so, um, we're going to look at our cards here for the uh, Americans. And it is not, it is not looking good. It is looking horrible, actually. All right, so each card has an action type on it. Look, move, hide, move, and move. All right, so that's... You have to play as many as you can possibly play. So there is a move, hide, shoot, move, look, shoot. I have no shoots. So shoot, I'm not going to get to... I'm not going to get to shoot. Darn it. But I do have enough cards to play... Moves, hides, looks, whatever. So, um, I think my best interest, okay, so here you'll see that a card has an owner. This one belongs to Reels. Unfortunately, Reels is real dead. So, how this works is, um, so let me find a card that's got three options. Here's a card that's got three options. A card can ha has has three action points during turn, Poss uh, up to up to three. Usually, always two. Sometimes a third one. There is the soldier, the dog tag section. There is the team bubble section, and there is the narrator box section. Like I said, it's set up kind of like a comic book. Um. So, in any order, you can execute this section, this section, or this section. But you have to complete a whole section before you move to the next one. So you can't, like, sight and then otter do something or whatever. So the dog tag means otter can do a look action. All right. And then the speech bubble means three soldiers may sight enemy. And that can be otter. That can be any of the three soldiers. Which, in the case of the Americans, they only have three soldiers. And then I can also draw four cards. So, but I don't get to draw the four cards now. I draw the four cards during the phase, which means I've already played my cards. 
The benefit to drawing the four cards is some soldiers will have a uh, the ability to store cards in their hide box. They'll have they can they can store a card. Um, none of these soldiers have that ability, which means they can tuck that many cards underneath them and carry them over to the next turn. So you've got something you really want to have, you can do them and then you draw them back up. So uh, this uh, blue, I believe, means that I have to do it, and it means it's optional. I have to look, but basically, it's just going to let me draw four cards and take the cycles four cards out of the deck if it's mandatory. So Otter can do something, three different soldiers can do something, and so on and so forth. So in the case of here where it's reels, I'm, I'm basically losing. This card got weaker because reels is dead, but I can still take, I can still play the card, and I can still take the other actions. So all I would get here is that one soldier getting to take cover if I play it for its hide action. All right. But to hide, you have to... Uh, you have to get away from the closest soldier. Uh, you have to. Be, uh, there's, there's a number of factors that, that determine if you can hide or not. First of all, you have to be in a in a square that has a hide factor. Uh, then you have to count the squares. Uh, not count the squares, but determine the distance from the nearest enemy who could spot you, and then subtract those factors from your soldier's take cover value. And then you have to get down to a below zero. So he's harder to hide because his cover is four squares, so he has to be further away to be hidden. Whereas Fields, uh, no Fields, Harrison has a zero, so he can hide pretty well. He can get out, he can get hidden pretty easily, which is important because I need him. He's my leader. He's not looking good for the Americans right now. I can tell you that much. So anyway, have to play cards. Normally, this would be. This would be done in secret. You would play the cards face down, then when the phase happens, you'd flip them over and declare which one you're going to do. Some cards do have multiples, so they'll, they multi-match, and then you, you can play it on that one, and then you can choose whatever action you want and which phase you're going to play it in. Um, so I think my best move <laughs> is to try to double move and get out of there. Uh, initiative is also important. Um, initiative is the number of cards you have left after you play cards here. So that's another reason to hold cards is because you can draw them into your hand and you have more cards. So you have more cards left when the turn actually starts after these, after the three cards have been played and you go into the first phase, that's when you determine initiative uh, at the beginning of the phase. And if you have cards in your hand, so that would be a reason to draw four cards is, is he would take over the initiative. So I took the look action. Let's see, the look action doesn't actually happen until the end. And I'm going to have to take the look action. But I'll get more cards, but then they're going to get discarded anyway. So uh, if we did have a close combat, then that would help me because I would have those cards in hand and that would give me back the initiative for a close combat. But Anyway, uh, so let's see what the options are. Now, I could move into another hex and attack. So that is something to consider is that I could move into another hex and attack in close combat. That may be my only option, unless I just try to run. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to put the move cards down. I've only got, I've got three. Um, and Harrison's still alive, so I want to use his. Reels is not alive, and Reels is not alive. I've got three Reels cards, too. That's not good. All right, so I'm going to use my first move here for Harrison. And then put that down on this lot. So I'll let Harrison move, then I'll let five soldiers move. There's only three, so only three of the five can move. That's be five different soldiers. But Harrison will be able to move again, and since he's my uh, my leader, I want to get him out of the way. Then I'm going to play another move card, and I will do... Uh, it really doesn't matter which one I do, because they're both reels, and they don't give me anything better. But since I can't shoot, I can at least move three soldiers again, so... Hopefully we'll get out of there. And then uh, I have to play a uh, look shoot. So I'm going to play the look. It's not going to really do much for me. But uh, we're going to draw cards in case there's a close combat. And we can sight. Uh, as of right now, there is only one German unit that's not seen. So we'll be able to sight them. Okay. So that's what we do. And then the allies have two cards left. So really quick for the Germans. Oh, they got oh, they got shoots. Shoot, 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 shoot. They get to shoot us. That's not going to be good. 
All right, well, the first thing is move and hide. So they do not have uh, a hide card. So they have to just choose between these two move cards. Now, what would happen if, 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 I couldn't, if I could not place any cards, if I could not place all three cards, I would place as many as I, as I possibly could, and then I would um, uh, draw from my deck until I got one that matched. And then everything, and then I would have discarded all of these, which starts my initiative, because I'm losing all my held cards. And I just draw and discard until I get one that fits. And I just take whatever it is. So uh, you, having more cards and more choices is always good. So first things first, pick one of these move cards. Well, we have Fisher, who has not done anything yet. He's still alive. And Bader, who is dead. Uh, but the Bader card, if I take him, he lets me move five soldiers. This would let me move Fisher and then two soldiers, so the max of three total. Or Fisher twice. So I'm going to use this one because it'll let me at least move all four soldiers. So look at that on there. There's not there. And then now we've got a shoot or move. So I can move again if I wanted to. Uh, or I can shoot. And since their mission is to kill, I think we will look at our shoot cards. So we've got Dryer who's still alive. We've got Meyer who's still alive. And Dryer and Meyer. Uh, no, I take it back. Meyer is actually dead. Meyer is gone, so he can't be involved. So that's Dryer can shoot, and this one soldier may shoot. Meyer can shoot, or two soldiers can shoot. So the net result is I get two soldiers that can shoot. So I will just play the Meyer one, because it gives me more options. And then we've got Look and then Shoot, and I guess we'll just go ahead and play that other shoot card. Uh, dryer still allows, so I'll let him shoot twice. Twice in a row. Now, the one, so they've got two cards left as well. So the one thing that's, that's left about this is during the phase, you will execute in order. So, the, so both, both players would flip over their cards, and then the move action would happen. Whoever had a move would do it. And then if they both did moves, then they would, um, then the initiative matters. But if you have initiative and you play to hide, it doesn't matter. The move will go first and then the hide. So uh, like it says on the card, move and then hide. Shoot and then move. Right, look and then shoot. So uh, you execute those in order, and we will resolve that next. All right, it's time to resolve the turns, um, or the phases. So the first phase to be resolved is move and then hide. So the right, okay. So right now, uh, both sides have two cards. I forgot on the initiative thing. So we tied for initiative. So then it comes down to who has the uh, soldier with the highest victory point total. My highest for the Allies is six, and my highest for the Germans is seven. So the Germans still have the initiative if we tie. So does anybody have a move? Let's see. The Americans have a move, and the Germans have a move. So there we go. Uh, so their card is for Bader. Gets a move, and then five soldiers may move. All right, well, Bader is dead, so all five soldiers may move. And you'll remember we are under restrictions for the restricted movement effects. Restricted movement effects on the chart indicates that to move, you, um, I believe it's a plus two to move. Which means it takes two move actions to get out of here. Just for looking at the really good rule book here. Okay, so here we go. All right, we've got move slow, move restricted, and move, I guess T is for tracked, uh, is ignored in this game. It will be added to the uh, Hell on Wheels expansion, uh, which adds vehicles, which I don't care about because uh, the scale of this does not need vehicles. It's like Combat Commander, perfect without vehicles. This doesn't need vehicles. So anyway, uh, we are on a restricted move tile. Uh, which means that to move out of corner is plus plus, and to move out of the side is normal. So that means if you're moving from here, from a road tile to here, it would be you'd have to have two moves, right, to move out of it. Otherwise, it would be normal um, if you come out the sides. So and that's that's actually good. That's hopefully I'm not getting that wrong. I'm sure somebody will let me know if I did. But the way I read it, it says that moving through the side on restricted is. Uh, normal movement. 
So it's only restrictive cutting corners, uh, which is fine. It adds to the, you know, you're kind of getting one square over and one square down, so you're going to build this move anyway. All right, so coming back to that. So now we've got the Germans can move everybody. Uh, essentially is all they can do since Bader's dead. So uh, each soldier can move one square. If they needed to move in a restricted fashion, uh, they have these tokens that are uh, move plus. So you can basically save your move up. And then you can, if you need more, you can add another move and get move plus plus. And then when they actually move, you can now move three times uh, their movement allowance. But I don't think we're going to have to do that here. So uh, one thing about movement is, um, uh, or excuse me, about the phases is if two soldiers, if, if opposing soldiers are in the same square uh, or the same landmark tile, uh, at the end of the phase, then a combat, close combat, is uh, is is taken. So uh, it can get messy really quick. So let's see what we're going to do here, movement wise. This is number one square. So um, uh, when we move, um, they can just move right on one of the sides. Uh, they are restricted movement, but if they move out of a side, uh, they are fine, and they can literally move. Um, out of any any side, they're in this whole square. So the, the size of it comes into play in other things like range finding and stuff, but for the most part, it's always uh, a single move. So, gonna, gonna do those moves. And these two guys are pinned, and they can only rally with a, um, with a hide action. And we did have a hide, but it was reels, and one soldier could take cover, so we couldn't have. We I'll show you the card here. Sorry, um, this is a reels card. Reels could have executed a hide action, and would allow him to have rallied soldiers, but he's dead, so that doesn't happen. And then the only other, the only other thing here is a soldier can take cover and hide, uh, but the only one that would have been able to hide would have been Harrison, and he's pinned and. That doesn't help him. So, and here is another rule uh, that's going to be fun, is a soldier that is in close contact cannot do any other action. So the Germans are actually going to go for a kill right here, I think. The Germans are going to go for a kill. Once a soldier is in close contact, which means they're in a, uh, in a tile, in a tile with um, uh, an enemy soldier, they can take no other action except uh, shoot. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. Doesn't matter. So they're in this whole tile. So we're gonna have they have no penalty to leave. So door is gonna come here. We're gonna shift these guys down. Do this one here. So shift these guys down. Door's going to come in. Hello, how are you? And then we've got uh, Schmidt. About Schmidt. He's coming in here. And what they've essentially done is pin these guys down. Now, Harrison couldn't have done anything anyway because he was pinned. Ooh, it's not looking good. Uh, all right, and Fisher here, who is still not spotted is going to and see this is where the uh, the knowledge does hurt a little bit because I know I know that the Americans aren't going to be able to shoot sometimes the cards do have some shoot on there but since they cannot shoot um, then uh, these guys know that they can actually get into there and uh, shoot at him when it comes to their shoot turns so that is, oh, that's just the way it is, right? Nothing I can do about it. And he's pinned, so he can't close the gap until he gets unpinned, and he can't rally. So this is going to end pretty quick, I think. So uh, Fisher is going to move one square into here, and he's fine, so he's in that square. And uh, the other move is Dryer, and he is going to, uh, uh, as long as he moves out of side, he's fine. So he's going to go ahead and just 
He's going to move here, and that way he can fire in there if he needs to, if the battle does not go well. All right, so uh, that's it for the for the German turn. They've done their move, and I see no reason not to, so what I always do is just take, take the card and go ahead and discard it because it's not relevant anymore. All right, now the Americans can move. All right, Harrison can do a move, and then five soldiers can move. So Harrison could double move. Problem is, Harrison cannot move. Because he's pinned, and he should probably you know, turn around and face the enemy. Do, do, do. I got you. Pew, 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 pew. Since everybody thinks that's what we do all the time anyway, right? Um, so Harrison can do nothing. And while he's pinned, all his stats are halved, which means his combat is not going to go well. Uh, fields. Let's see. Unit that is pinned. There's an important note here about units that are pinned. Let me carry get it. No. Soldiers who are in combat contact may not take any action except fight and close shoot it in urban areas. So we're not in an urban area, so they can't even close shoot. All they can do is fight. So they're stuck. We pin them down pretty good. Now, a pinned soldier cannot move, but a pinned soldier. Uh, could shoot. Um, so if I had a shoot order, he could still execute a shoot. Being pinned, he would just his his uh, his uh, stats would be halved. But he can't move because he's pinned, and these guys can't move because they're effectively pinned. One is pinned, and one is effectively pinned by the close combat. So that card is done. And now this card up. We are at the end of the phase, and it is going to be time for a close combat in this tile. Okay, so now it's time to resolve this close combat in the square. Uh, we have Harrison and Fields against uh, Schmidt and Dorr. All right, so here's how the close combat works. Uh, right now, we do have initiative um, of the, for the Germans, so they will get to play a card first. So how, here's how that works. Each soldier that's involved uh, New Harrison and Fields. Right. Yes, Harrison and Fields. Sorry. All right, their fight total is there. Harrison draws four cards. Fields draws two cards. Harrison is pinned, so his stats are reduced. In addition, if they were outnumbered two to one, if for instance Harrison wasn't in there, Fields would be outnumbered two to one. He would lose. Oh, he would lose one card as well. So it gets really ugly if you're overpowered. So, so we get two cards for Harrison and two cards for Fields. So we draw four cards, and that just tells you how many cards you draw. And I'm not going to look at them. And then we have uh, Door and Schmidt. So let's see what we got here. Schmidt and Door. Can you get me or together? Now they each get two cards, all right? So they get four cards as well. Hopefully I've got enough without shuffling. I'm gonna have to shuffle this up. Two, three, we only have three. So I'm gonna shuffle. You do draw a new card, you do not use the cards that you already hold in your hand because then they wouldn't be secret. So, all right, so he had three. So now he's got four. So here's how it works. The, uh, the Germans have the initiative, so the Germans will get to play uh, the first card in the close combat. So we're going to look at their cards, and all we're looking at here is these results in the bottom. I oh, know, they've got a kill. Oh, they've got two kills. So we know that uh, this is basically not going to end well, because no matter what the Americans can do, they're going to get to kill both the soldiers. So. We'll just we'll play it out. There's there's zip, which means nothing. There's pin, which gives them a pin marker. There's wound, which causes the character to flip over to their wounded side, which has different stats. And there is kill, which eliminates the soldiers. Now, one thing they would have the option of on their uh, event card is they gain they gain five victory points for captured enemies. So with, in close combat, if you draw a kill result, if you draw a kill result in shooting, it kills him. 
But if you draw a kill result in close combat, you can take them a prisoner. But then when you move, you have to move them off the map, and you have to stay with them the whole time. Uh, and you have you can't just exit off the map. You have to exit through one of the areas. Now, there is an area there that's close, right? So they could try to to get them off, especially if that guy is dead. They could, they could take them prisoner, or they could try to backtrack to another to another area uh, and go for the victory points. But I think uh, it's probably smarter to just go for the kills right now because that's gonna first of all it's gonna get them. They have to kill them. They have to kill them to uh, to get the thirteen points. And right now they need one more to do that. So anyway. Uh, so all you do is essentially discard this to kill, and you pick the soldier, and obviously they are going to take Harrison, because he's the officer. So Harrison comes over here and joins, goes into the penalty box, and the pen marker goes back in there. All right, now the Americans get a turn, so you alternate sides until there's no soldiers left in close combat or no cards that can be played. So if the Americans have all zips, this is going to be bad. Let's see. We have a we have a wound. We have a pen. We have a zip, and we have a wound. So they're only going to get to wound somebody. They're not going to get to kill anybody. So that is terrible. So we'll play the the reels wound because we'll hurt him. All right, and we are going to wound the more dangerous soldier, the more victory point soldier. And so we'll wound Schmidt. So Schmidt will flip over. To his wounded side and see his stats all, all change. And Schmidt, you don't need to mark Schmidt as wounded here because he's wounded there. A pen or a uh, some other uh, no, just a pen marker would go there. Okay, so that was the Americans' turn. Now the Germans are obviously going to play their kill. And they are taking out fields. Bye-bye. All right, so Fields is off the board, and you take their two cards here. That was Fields and Harrison, and you give them to them because they'll get the victory points at the end. And then the so there's no there's no close combat left, and therefore the rest of the close combat cards get discarded. So they're out of the the card mix at least for a little while but right now we've got three healthy germans one uh wounded german against one pinned private otter who is sitting right there and it's pretty much dead meat so that has concluded that phase we go to the next phase which is shoot and then move and the germans played shoot the americans played move so the germans are going to shoot and Meyer can shoot, and two soldiers can shoot. Well, Meyer's dead, so two soldiers can shoot. And we will do a quick uh, shoot turn. Uh, and pretty much end this battle, I would think. Now it's time to resolve our shooting. And here is how this is done. It's actually very, very, very simple. Each soldier has on their card, we'll just look at, uh, we'll look at uh, Otter here. They have shoot ranges, which is... Uh, Tosses for grenades, uh, but you got three squares, five squares, and ten squares. You need to have a sighted enemy, uh, and the only way you can sight an enemy is to actually do a sight on them, which is a different matter, which we won't get into probably this this video. Um, or if they fire, then they're sighted. So Fisher there is still unsighted. He's moved, but he has not been seen. Now, if he moves into the same square, he would be seen. But I don't believe that being in an adjacent square uh, makes you visible, you know, to actually try to look for him. Because uh, Otter's kind of busy right now, trying to not die. Which I do believe he about, he's about to die. Alright, so, uh, each square has these uh, values for look, hide, shoot, and move that give you modifiers. Um, so what you do is you determine the angle of fire. And you do that by connecting a line from the closest corner of the identification badge of the tile to the identification badge of the target tile. And you can do that 
Hey, it worked on the first try. Nope, and then it stopped. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you see that line is going through 3A, 16A, and into 15A. So like most games, you don't count the shooter's tile. You count the other squares that it goes through, and that is two squares. Okay? And then you would... The, the actual distance is two squares. The effective range of the uh, soldier, however, is their range minus any of these uh, modifiers, shoot modifiers that are passed through, and not counting their own square. So they're assumed to be shooting fine from their square. So we went through our square, went 16A, 15A, there are no shoot modifiers, so they basically get what their range is. So we're gonna let uh, Durr and Schmidt, Durr and Schmidt, uh, take the two shots, and they are at a two range. So look over at Durr, and his close range is three squares, right? So three squares minus zero penalties is three squares is his effective range. We're only two squares away, so he can shoot it close. All right, so Durr is going to shoot at close range at Otter. So how you do that is you draw, the shooter draws a card from their deck and looks at the results, the hit check results from their range and higher. You get all the results for the longer range too. So let's see what we got here. Short or close range is a miss. Short is a hit. Long is a miss. So you get everything above, at and above. So he got two hits. All right. So all he did was register two hits. Now Fields gets to draw what damage happened. And he draws a card for each hit. So there's one hit. So he draws a card. And the same box at the bottom will determine the result. And that result is a kill. And he's dead. And all the Americans are now dead, so there's no need to continue that. And the marker obviously comes off. And for this game, the uh, Germans have won. They had four soldiers. They had four soldiers left. They got all the victory points. So then totaling up their victory points... Uh, you would normally play to the end of the turn like this. This game would go to 15 rounds, and you would normally play to the end of that or other uh, victory conditions or when these cards run out, uh, when you can't put out three cards on a turn and the game's immediately over and you add up points. All right? So the final score, uh, technically, I mean, the Germans won because they, they killed everybody. But the Americans actually did. They did not capture any of the landmarks. We had one but lost it. Uh, we didn't. You don't lose it after you capture it, but we didn't hold it the next turn. So, so the Americans technically got six points, but the Germans got uh, four, and four is eight, and six is fourteen, and four is eighteen, and four is twenty-two. So they got twenty-two points for that. Plus, they completed their mission, uh, killing over half the enemy soldiers encountered. So that 22 plus 13 is a 35. So congratulations, Germans. You won the battle. So anyway, that is a... We didn't we didn't get to cover uh, the other phases. I guess we got into the shoot phase of that turn. Uh, so we didn't get into the second phase. Um, so I didn't cover looks or hides or anything like that. But they're all pretty self-explanatory in the rules. Um, great game. Love this game. Uh, really fun, quick action game. It'll be even fun if I can get my... Uh, get my son to play it, uh, which he probably will. Um, I can't believe this one's kind of kind of like uh, Karate Kid was in the theaters. It was a sleeper. I mean, uh, I don't know why this has not got more um, popularity than it does. Seems like the people who play it love it. Uh, so more people need to play it. So anyway, that is how you uh, quickly play a out uh, Sergeant's D Day. Uh, Definitely recommended. And thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye bye.